everybody. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July. This is Allison here from Jim's Music in Green Bay. And we are going to make a harp today for our learn to play session. So here's what you're going to need. I have some colored duct tape. You can use duct tape or you can use um, just color crayons or some glue and paper. We're going to make the outside like we did with our bongo drums. We're going to make the outside of our instrument today look really snazzy. I have a small box as my next material for today. This one is a phone, like an old phone box. So it just, it's kind of small, you know, like for an iPhone. That's what I'm using. However, you can totally use like a shoe box. You could have your parents um, cut a hole in a, like a juice container the long way. We just need a, a big long something here um, where we can put our last material rubber bands across. Um, and we're going to play with the science of sound today and how length and size and tension change sound on an instrument. So we're going to make a little handheld harp that you can um, use your fingers and pluck and make some cool songs with. Okay, so to start off, I have varying sizes of rubber bands. I have some really big ones. Do you need super big ones? No. I, this is just what I had laying around. They come in, they come at the store at Jim's Music. They come with like a lot of our instruments to keep the packaging on, like these really big ones. So I know this isn't as common for you to have in your house, but um, it's common around this store for us to have these big ones. So I'm gonna use these up, but I definitely have smaller ones. Um, you could use, you know, hair ties. Um, I do like the rubber bands because they, when they, um, when you snap them, you get a good vibration out of them and they ring out for a while. So when you put them on this box and you, to make your harp, you're going to be putting a lot of tension on there. Um, oh, a shoe box would work too. A small shoe box. Okay, just so you know. Um, and then I have like this one. It's tiny. So compare them, right? So we're going to get a bunch of different sounds out of our rubber bands today and out of our, um, out of our box. So here's what we're going to do first. I'm going to put my fancy uh, rubber bands on here, okay? Now with my big ones, I figured out that I can just string them across the top, cross them in back, and string them across the other side, okay? So for my, big, for my big rubber bands, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to do it three times because I have three large rubber bands. Okay, one, here's my second one. Cross in the back. And I'm going to put this on the front. Now my smaller ones, I'm going to use in the middle. And the cool thing about using rubber bands is that you can adjust how tense they are just by uh, moving them around a little bit and playing with the tension. Um, and that tension, here's another one. This is a large one. I'm just going to wrap it around twice on this side and we'll just see what happens. Okay. Um, the cool thing about doing this is that the tension is what's important. The more tense that you have, your rubber band is in a certain section, it's going to give you a higher pitch sound because technically, if it's really nice and tight, it's a shorter rubber band. Now you've pulled it so that there is less of the rubber band going across the surface area of your box. Okay, my lighting is a little bit... Okay, so if you pull it... Now if I loosen it out and I get I bring some tension back 
I loosen that up. Now it's making a much lower sound. So we're gonna play with that a little bit in a minute here and see if we can come up with a, a do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do scale. Just a regular standard scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. I just need one more to make a scale. But I'm gonna put a couple extra on just for fun. Okay, I'm gonna play a song. Okay, so now you should have you know, I would use it. I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to have about 11, 10 or 11 rubber bands going across. If you've ever seen a harp, they are so, there's so many. They're way bigger, right? You can hold them right here in front of you. We don't have a harp at the store right now, but if we did, you'd be able to see how you can hold it right in front of you and um, pluck the strings this way, okay? So what we could do is hold ours like this. Okay, does that make sense? Now check this out. <clears throat> and I just want to make sure that my lighting is okay for you guys to see this. All right, so check this out. This one here is ringing out nice and high. This one's ringing out a little lower, okay? So I'm gonna make my lower strings, I'm gonna put it so that there's not as much tension on top of the box down here. So this one goes do. So we want like a ray, so I'm gonna make it a little tighter. Let's see, each time you go, you're gonna to have to adjust it, which is where the tape comes in in a minute. enough that I could do it twice around again. And then we put these guys down here. So this is actually one of my smaller rubber bands, but I'm going to put it down here by the low ones because it is ringing out really low. So I've moved this one here. Some of them I might have to put around one more time to get that higher tension. If you remember when we made the guitars and we were stringing rubber bands at that time, they put this box or your, your um, box under a tremendous amount of pressure because each of them is pretty strong. Okay, so we've got Just a little bit, a little bit, Let's see if we can get it. So you can fiddle with it for as long as you'd like to make your scale do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. You can fiddle with that as long as you like with the tension. You'll feel that pulling one much tighter going to give you a different feeling than one that's much looser. Okay, so with this box here, I'm going to take my fancy tape. I'm just going to put it around the outside here. And what it's going to do is help support some of that tension whilst making your instrument look real snazzy. So I've got red. And the cool thing about my tape in this box, you guys, is that it's like the exact same width. If you, if you were to make a measurement, like I really don't have to cut or trim much at all. Crazy. Now if I were really fancy, I would have put some on the inside of the box. First and foremost. So that the inside was red. 
turn on my scissors today. I'm gonna use my teeth. If you have some scissors, those will come in handy. I'm gonna put a few strips on the back just to make it look snazzy. Cover up my mess of tension and strings back here. Yeah, so that'd be kind of... But then that's gonna hold once you've got your strings tuned up and as tense as you want them and where you can make a sound that you think is kind of pleasant to your ear. And it's, it's not gonna be so loud that it bothers people in your household either, which is kind of nice. Um, but once you have it kind of where you want it, this tape helps keep them locked in. You'll still be able to adjust a little bit if you have to, but it keeps it nice and locked in for you. So here you go. I'm having a lot of fun with this already. So I'm, I need to adjust mine just a little bit and I still can, but it makes it a little easier. So this one and this one are about the same pitch. I'm just gonna adjust that. Fun way to play. Very fun way to play. So a box, rubber bands, some tape, um, and you can make a pretty cool harp. If it were me and I had more time with you, I would probably make like a design. I'd cover this up in the inside, maybe write harp or music love or something in there. Maybe draw some music notes. Um, you can make it however you want, which is what music is all about, right? You can get creative, you can make it however you want. So such a simple little thing, right? But it's basically a harp for you. So keep making music, my friends, um, and I will see you next time on Title Town Learn to Play.